ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه وبركاته عليه يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان خير الكلام كلام الله جل في العلا واحسن هدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار Just this week we have witnessed rather on a daily basis we see the signs of the hours approaching rather they are here in a lot of ways and from them is the death of the ulama where the affairs will become critical when the umma lose its lose <coughs> their true correct scholars of the religion at the time of death when the angels descend upon all of us eventually either the angels of mercy will come to take us inshallah and that's what we ask Allah to actualize for us or the angels of punishment may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to die upon istiqama for what we see of of the ulama who have died in which you'll find that that the, that the great Imam Al-Sheikh Saleh ibn Luhaydan rahimahullah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon him make his grave spacious and raise his degree and may nassal Allah an yudkhilahu fi fasihi jannatih wa yaghfir wa yaghfir Allah wa yatagammadahu bi wasi'i rahmatihi wa maghfiratihi and including that from the scholars of Kuwait who is a father of mine Sheikh Zaid bin Hulais al-Dawsiri rahimahullah who also just passed if i'm not mistaken the night before last who died of a sudden heart attack rahimahullah so these are all affairs you find they have reached a point where they become very critical how will our state be when we die will it be in a manner in which the angels are pleased with us us with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with us and he sends the angels down to collect the soul of the dead one whether it's that soul that's mutmainna is it that soul that is at ease at ease meaning it's died upon istiqama it's died upon uprightness that is the affair all of the affair revolves around this matter what state will you be when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends the angels to take your soul is it in a manner that's pleasing to Allah like i have reminded everyone on many occasions these are evaluations that we have to constantly make with ourselves for in every second every split second counts no one knows when the qadr will take over in which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for that individual at that particular moment death is imminent and it can happen in any given second Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his no in his tremendous great book 
that he mentions about this affair, about death and the angels coming. You'll find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in that tremendous ayah that a lot of us are aware of and we recite it. But it's incumbent upon us to now contemplate upon its meaning and how it affects us in our daily lives. And it's just not a mere recital, but it's an affair that penetrates our hearts in a manner that now makes an incentive for us to prepare for the reality that's coming at any given moment. Allah Ta'ala says in this book, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ أَنْ لَا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوْعَدُونَ نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِي أَنفُسُكُمْ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَدْعُونَ نُزُلًا مِنْ غَفُورِ الرَّحِيمِ Allah Ta'ala says in this book, if one wants the angels to descend upon him in a manner that is not violent, rather in a manner that is showing glad tidings, not that you are about to embark upon Allah's wrath, or you're about to embark upon Allah's humiliation, May Allah grant you and grant us some protection from that. That you do not want to die in a state when you're embarking upon the torment of Allah. That's greater than any sin in this world. No one can tolerate or handle the torment and humiliation and disgrace of Rabbul Alameen in the hereafter. We want the opposite. The opposite that was mentioned in this ayah. Those who say, my Lord is Allah. Meaning they verbalize it. They affirm that iman. Thumma staqamu. Then they're upright. Meaning that what they uttered, what they verbalize, that it manifests in their actions. Istiqama as uprightness. That is a clear point to show that actions are from iman. Do not let anyone come from the whispers of the shaitan saying, I don't have to pray because Iman is here in my heart. I don't have to grow my beard. My Iman is here. I don't have to wear my thobe but my ankle. Iman is here. No. Allah Ta'ala says, who says, my Lord is Allah. Then they're upright. Meaning, it manifests clearly in their actions. Uprightness is displayed in their actions. What is done outwardly from the actions and also what is verbalized by the tongue clearly displays of what's taking place in your heart. That is the confirmation. That is the mirror of what reflects upon what you attest in your heart. Allah Ta'ala says in this affair about the matter of being upright, that if a, if a person actualizes that, and we talked about from the benefits of this ayah, but the great Imam who also died recently, the great Imam Muhammad ibn Adam Ethiopia rahimahullah, who just also recently died from the great scholars of this religion, that he said in this affair of saying, my Lord is Allah, then being upright. He said that the affair of saying that my Lord is Allah and being upright goes back to the most virtuous of all of those affairs. He said that the greatest of all matters which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can bestow upon a servant, that if Allah truly wants good for you, that he will keep you firm upon that matter of la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, and he will give you tawfiq, success, for that to be manifested in your actions, and you will remain firm upon that all the way up to your death. He said that that is the greatest and the most virtuous of all of his. It's not the fact that Allah granted you money or that Allah grant you opulence or an easy life or those matters that we think in our minds which is considered being favored. The greatest of all affairs that Allah can bestow upon any individual is that you remain firm upon that affair consistently throughout your life all the way up to death 
is the most honorable affair that Allah can bestow upon any slave. Not being inconsistent, and that we'll talk about with the oath of Umar al-Khattab radiallahu an, where he said that the meaning of the man narration where it comes with the authority of Abdullah ibn Uthman Thaqafi, we asked the Messenger of Allah sallallahu a very short question and said to him, he says about the affair of what? He says, give me something, O Messenger of Allah, an affair in which I ask you about that no one I will ask after you. The Messenger of Allah, as we mentioned, said two words. Say, I believe in Allah. Then be upright upon that affair. Abu Khattab mentioned and said about this matter, he said, that an la yarugh rawaghan al-thalab. He said that you do not now try to maneuver your way, being shysty, where you did de- de- now deviate from the affair of uprightness, the deviation or the movement of a fox, meaning that Allah keep you firm upon that matter, that you never deviate, that you never become weak to the point where you fall off, or that Allah keep your feet planted firm upon what's correct, all the way to the point where the angels will take you at death, and when the angels come, We'll speak about in the next khutbah. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له الملك الحق المبين وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله سيد ولد آدم أجمعين صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين على مر الأيام والليال والشهور والسنين أما بعد الله تبارك وتعالى says in his book verily those who say my Lord is Allah then they work diligently for that being actualized in their actions they did not just say I say my Lord is Allah And then they say, no, Islam is in my heart. I have to do nothing. That's absolute nonsense. Absurd. They're upright, as Allah Ta'ala says, which is another proof from the belief of Ahlul Sunnah that actions is from Iman. And that if you want to know how you are with Allah Ta'ala, where's the sign of what is the love of your faith and how you are with Allah, look to your actions. Allah Ta'ala says in this book, those who actualize those affairs of iman and uprightness, steadfastness, angels will descend upon them. The angels will descend upon them, they're not to fear nor grieve. And it's different to fasir concerning this and all of them are correct. We know that we have angels that have been appointed, have been appointed that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala has given them a mission over the children of Adam. From them, brothers and sisters, is they write the deeds. They're on the right, they're on the left. You have angels. It's not allegorical, it's not metaphorical, it's real. It's a real affair. They write down everything we say and do. It's not fairy tales, it's not the, the stories of old. They are true. They will come on the day of resurrection and they will be either a witness for us or against us. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has angels appointed to protect us. To protect us individually. As the ayat come, لَهُ مُعَقِّبَاتٌ مَنْ بَيْنَ يَدَيُ مِنْ خَلْفِهِ يَحْفَظُونَهُ مِنْ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ra'd, He says that the eight children of Adam that he has angels which are in front of him and from behind him. And they protect him by the command of Allah. 
And when the affair of Allah with his, pre with his decree that something will happen, they leave him off. If it's time for you to die, and it's your appointed time has come, they leave. For verily you'll find your ma'ash al That the angels also from their functions, if Allah wants good for his servant, he says they will encourage him to do good. They will inter encourage him to do good deeds. They will keep him fat. They will keep him steadfast. They will keep him patient to what he's enduring, what he or she is going through. They will encourage him to do good deeds, encourage him to be firm, be patient from their affairs. Is that they protected him, and a person would say, What's the delil? The delil is this, where Allah says in the same context in the ayah, نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْأَخِرَةِ we were your protectors. We were the one that were appointed over you in this world. You'll find that the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as it comes in the Sahih. Speaking about the angels, he says in the affairs of which they are constantly over you. And that they will be over you except in the time of a course where it says pertaining to the affairs of the bathroom in intimacy. But the message of Allah to the point in the narration was said, he said that those angels that are around you constantly now listen to this narration the message of Allah said he said honor those angels and be shy of them honor them and be shy of them are we shy of them these days brothers and sisters of what we indulge in on a daily basis are we shy of them in which the message of Allah has given us clarity the reality of what we're supposed to do so these affairs can motivate us to be upright, preparing for when they will come when we die. Then the Prophet says in his book, that the angels would descend upon him. You'll find that there's different narrations upon, upon this affair saying that one of the meanings is, is that the angels will come at death. That they will come at death and if it is from those who actualize la ilaha illallah and that clearly manifest in their actions he said that the angels of what of a rahma would descend that the angels of mercy would descend upon the servant i want everyone in their mind that when you are part of, you are about to depart from this dunya how will the angels be when they descend what will be your state Think about it and contemplate. Because either the angels of mercy will descend or the angels of punishment. When the angels of punishment descend, brothers and sisters, there's no one that can aid anyone except Allah, your guns and everything you think that made you so-called tough and haughty in this world will be removed. The arrogance will be done. The angels of punishment will come or the angels of mercy May Allah to be allow the angels of mercy to take our soul. You'll find that it says that the angels of mercy will descend and they will give glad tidings. And they will say, which was mentioned in this ayah, that Allah to be ta'ala says in this book, Allah ta'khafu wa la ta'hzanu. You'll find that Ibn Kathir mentions other statements in regards to this and he said that all of them are correct. He says that the angels will descend. It says when the soul now is embarking upon the hereafter and leaving this world, because that's what it's all about, brothers and sisters. It's not about this world. It's about what is going to be the reality in the hereafter eternally. He said that the angels would descend. And then the individual, when they see the angels, they will be in a state of horror. Because now you're embarking upon a fair of the hereafter. So now you'll find that the statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, where he said in this book called Al Aqidat al Wasitiyah, where he said the great statement, Man mat faqad qamat qiyamatu. With a statement where he says, Whoever dies, his day of resurrection has started. Whoever dies, his day of resurrection has started. So when the angels come, and then you see now that what Allah has promised is true, it's not fairy tales anymore, it's not just a khutbah anymore. 
It's not about classes anymore. It's not about laughing and thinking that when you indulge in a certain affairs, it was all comical. It was all funny. See, everything now is put in this perspective because the angels now are taking your soul in this moment. So now you'll find, as it says in the ayah, that the angels, when the individual is in a state of horror and fright because he sees now that the hereafter is true and that the reality is true and that the affair of what was unseen now becomes what? Clear. That Allah Ta'ala has now removed the, or that, that covering where the affairs of the unseen now has become what? That has now manifested itself for every human being in that moment. So now when the angels come, the soul will be and the individual will be in a state of horror. And they will say to him, if they're the malaika of rahmah that all angels, the angels of mercy will say, don't fear. Don't fear of what you're about to embark upon. And do not feel grief, but do not feel grief about your children and your wife who you're leaving off now and your family and your loved ones. Do not feel grief. Have glad tidings. Glad tidings of paradise which you've been promised due to the fact that you actualize the ubudi of Allah, the tawheed of Allah, the sunnah of the messenger of Allah, and you abandon those major sins and you made true toba to Allah which you fell into of those major sins. You have now abandoned in that because all of those affairs is a part of actualizing and purifying your ubudi of Allah. Tabaraka wa ta'ala. They say in the ayah that we give glad tidings of paradise of which you've been promised. Wa abshiru bil jannati lati kuntum tu'adun. We were your protectors in this world where we encourage you to remain firm and patient. Now you will have what every soul desires. What every individual desires. And you will have everything of what you want. And it will be in a manner of which you are a guest from Rafur Rahim, as we'll talk about in the next ayah. Those are from some of the, of, of, from the benefits of the ayah. Your father Ibn Kathir mentions that he said that the angels descending upon you in death is not the only matter. Notice it says in the ayah, we were your protectors in this world and hereafter. Your father's a narration is saying, that the angels also will be with you in the grave. They will also be with you in the grave. They will either be with you in a manner in which your grave will be a garden from the garden of bliss or be a, a, a hole or be a pit from the pit of hell. May Allah keep us protected from that. That our grave be a pit from the pit of hell. And that the grave will be constricted upon a person's body. Because we know, brothers and sisters, the grave is dark, it's lonely, it's constricted, and it can either be a, a means for your demise and a painful torment, or it could be from the ways or those places of bliss, or it could be from the gardens of gardens of paradise. And that's what we want. Brothers and sisters, make sure you do your deeds for Allah to be with the Allah. For verily, if you do your deeds for Allah, you will not feel any type of way of those who let you down, whether it be from your mother, whether it be from your father, whether it be from your children, whether it be from your friends, whether it even be from the people of the sunnahs who sometimes let you down. And I'm saying this clearly. Those who let you down. Why? Because if you do it for Allah, when you're alone in that grave, Allah will save you. And you will not feel any type of way for those who let you down. For verily, as the great from those friends of mine, Sheikh Muhammad bin Ghalib, Hafizullah, he said in a statement that he said, when you're in the grave, when you're dead, he said, do your deeds for Allah. He said, why? Why do you do your deeds for Allah? He said, because when you're dead, you're in the grave, you're under the dirt, people in this world are going to be busy. They're not going to think about you every day. There's going to be a time where people will grieve, they will cry, then they, then they will move on. They have to take care of their daily affairs. They have to care for what's going on in their life. So they're not going to be thinking about you all the time. 
If you do your deeds for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you in the grave. And he will allow your grave to be what? That place in which all of us are trying to actualize that goal, which is to be a garden from the gardens of bliss. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you paradise, because all the deeds that you did, all the good that you did in this world, it was for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you don't have to feel no type of way when the human beings forget about you. Because eventually, brothers and sisters, when we're in that grave, eventually people will forget about you. There will be times where they will think they will think about you from time to time, but human beings in this world are busy. They grieve, they're upset, and then Allah Taala wa ta'ala also gives us a time where we could be sad and grieve for our loved ones who pass. But then after that, the ahkam shows you have to move on. You have to carry on in your life. It's a time now to move on. You grieve. The law gave you your time to grieve. But eventually you have to move on. You have to gather your thoughts and carry on in life and make sure that you prepare for that inevitable reality that's coming. From those affairs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant the abd in the grave is that the angels will be with him. The angels will be with him in the qabr. And then Ibn Kathir mentions another narration pertaining to when you are resurrected on the day of resurrection. He said that those same angels in this world who protected you and in the grave will also give you glad tidings when you are raised from the parent, from graves from the grave, in which on the day of resurrection, everyone knows that will be the most horrific events that will take place that's unimaginable. Everybody knows the day of resurrection is going to be the, the most, you think guns and violence is scary? You think people getting shot every day is scary? The day of resurrection is no comparison. So the angels will come when he's resurrected or she is resurrected. And they will say, every, every horror and fright and terror that you're going to see right now, he says, be calm and be what? Feel safe. He says in the narration, you ennisunahu. They will bring him that comfort on the day of resurrection of those who disbelieve and who was not upon uprightness. They will give him now that security and tranquility. For those of the affairs that we want, in which Allah Taala has mentioned in His book about the angels, and they are fair in their reality and their state, and we ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to give us tawfiq to actualize La Ilaha Illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, and that be clearly manifested in our actions. And may Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala take us at death in a manner that is pleasing to Him, not in a manner that has now incited His anger or His wrath. Or his humiliation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq. Fanasal Allah to be with the Arabi Ismail al Husna, with Sifati al Ula, Ayatawala na bidi ayatihi, where Hivlihi fit dunya al Akhira. When Nasal Allah to be with the Ada, and you rean and Hakka Hakan, we are Zukana Tibaa, we rean al Batila Batila, we are Zukana Stinaba, with Allah who was Salama Wabaraka and the Bin of Muhammad. وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وسبحانك اللهم وبحمدك وأشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفر كوات إليك وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيم الصلاة.